Okay class, today we're going to talk about the invertebrate respiratory system. For our learning objectives today, we have an understanding of how simple gas exchange occurs. We want you to have a general idea of the difference between the three main systems of invertebrate respiration. We want you to have a fundamental understanding of the anatomy of the insect respiratory system and also to know some of the limitations of that respiratory system. We're going to start off, first of all, with the functions of the respiratory system. And the respiratory system really only has one main function, and that's gas exchange. The high concentration of carbon dioxide in the body flows out of the body down its concentration gradient, and the high concentration of oxygen outside the body flows into the body down its concentration gradient. This helps to maintain homeostasis. The respiratory system also helps in a lesser degree to regulate the blood pH because the expulsion of carbon dioxide helps to lower said pH. The three main types of invertebrate respiration are gills, book lungs, and trachea. Both the book lungs and the gills work in conjunction with the cardiovascular system to deliver oxygen to the rest of the body. The trachea, however, is independent of the circulatory system and allows oxygen to be delivered directly to the body's organs. We're going to look a little more in depth at this system in this particular podcast. Um, the trachea has a very simple anatomy with a spiracle or opening to the outside environment, a trachea leading into the body of the insect, and finely branched tracheals extending to the organs where the gas exchange can occur. Small insects may use passive diffusion due to their small body mass to trachea surface area ratio. Largest, larger insects, on the other hand, may implement venting mechanisms to maintain homeostasis due to their increased body mass to tracheal surface area ratio. Interestingly, when insects are placed in a highly oxygenated environment, they tend to grow larger than their less oxygenated counterparts. This is because less energy must be invested in the tracheal system, and more energy can be put towards the growth of other systems, most notably the legs of the insect. This method, method of respiration also has some fundamental limitations on the insect, most notably on their growth. The insect size becomes in many ways a slave to the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere as they cannot maintain homeostasis in low oxygen environments. This keeps many insects small in order to maintain their respiratory system's effective effectiveness. The respiratory system is also limited by its need to maintain simplicity. Increasing the complexity could lead to an increase in water loss from the insect. In other words, the insect is so dependent on maintaining control of its respiratory system that it cannot augment its system. This concludes our overview of the invertebrate respiratory system and the tracheal system.